actually, it's even harder to get into PMA than to get into tuning, I think. What? Hello, mabuhay. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Ira Lehman, ang owner and founder ng filcomuk.com website. Ang filcomuk.com po ay isang online directory ng mga Filipino events, businesses, at organizations dito po sa United Kingdom. Kung kaya't kung kayo po ay isang business owner or community leader na may association, or kung kayo po ay isang event organizer dito po sa United Kingdom, I'd like to invite you to use our website and add your listing for free. At ngayon po, nasa fourth episode na po tayo ng Philcom Features. Ang Philcom Features po, by the way, um, is an interview series na kinakwento ang mga pakikipagsapalaran ng mga kababayan natin dito sa United Kingdom. And our next guest, our fourth guest natin sa segment na ito, um, he's got quite an impressive profile and I'm really so excited to speak with him today. Ano po siya, um, isa po siyang Shivening Scholar um, na he got awarded the scholarship last year. Alam niyo po yung Shivening Scholarship is a very prestigious scholarship um, recognized globally na funded po siya ng British Foreign and Commonwealth Office. And yung number of applicants po, po nila on average every year is around 65,000. 65,000 people apply for scholarship at alam niyo ba kung ilan yung tinatanggap nila? Mga 1,650 lang. So, yung acceptance rate is 2.5% lang, imagine. Yeah. So, he was one of those 2.5% na nakapasok, na, na, award, na, na got awarded the scholarship. So, that alone, I think, is quite an achievement. Pero, the more interesting part is, he's actually a lieutenant commander sa Philippine Navy. Um and he was awarded uh, the most outstanding officer by the Department of National Defense, yung DISG po. But now, at the moment, dito sa UK, he's um, with Loughborough University at ano po siya doon, student ambassador po siya doon sa Loughborough University. Ibig sabihin po, siya po yung mismong representative ng university, di ba? So, how's that for an achievement? And then really... Like the Filipino pride in me is like, talagang ano siya, it's really very here, through the roof na. Intro pa lang yan na. And um, he's studying a um, Master's of Science in Peace Building and Diplomacy. So I didn't know na yung Peace Building pa na, pero pala talagang pag-aralan yan. So feeling ko madami ko matututunan and hopefully kayo rin po um, sa episode nito. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's welcome our next guest. Drum roll please, Mr. Ero De La Cruz. Hi! Hi! Hi. Hi. Magandang araw sa inyo. Magandang, uh, Things from London. Yeah, magandang araw. And Ero, I feel like I have to salute, huh? Pero, <laughs> um, what would people call you then? Your like official title is lieutenant. Uh, lieutenant commander. Lieutenant, com- l- lieutenant commander. So yeah, just bear me. Please call me. Pero lang ba error na lang? Okay lang ba? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, bear with me, because like I have no um, knowledge of you know military, yung mga rankings yeah. ganon. So. Yeah, warning that I'll be asking lots of stupid questions. So, appreciate your patience in advance. But let's talk about, ano, yung shivening. Like, wow, yeah. my goodness. Um, Can you tell us a bit more? So, you, you you know, obviously you're here now. It's a UK. And when did you when did you actually start your studies here? Okay. So, um, first, the first question, Chivning. Chivning Scholarship Program, I think, is one of the most prestigious scholarship programs in the world. And um, nagi invite siya ng different students from around the world. And we're very lucky na uh, medyo marami sa Philippines kayon. And yun nga, I am one of them. Uh, currently, I'm studying uh, yung, actually, you missed the security. Masters of Science in Security, Peace Building, and Meron Diplomacy. Security. So, Security, yeah. Peace Building, and Diplomacy. Yeah. So, yeah. I didn't yeah. like. Amazing na talagang pwede palang pag-aralan yun. I didn't know. Yes, of course, yeah. yeah, okay. So, hmm. yeah, you said you, um, you, may batch tayo na galing sa Philippines for, uh, yeah. ano, yung year 2000, uh, 2020, di ba? Every year naman, ayun, meron tayong uh, cohort from the Philippines. Nag-vary really? lang siya. Yeah. Iba-iba sa, iba-iba per year kung ilan. Kasi, uh-huh. uh, I'm not 100% sure on how they, they assign the number per country, but as far as I know, 
is that you have to qualify with the standards of shaving. So kung ilan yung pumasa sa standards nila in a particular country, then they will give you the scholarship. So we have countries in the world na merong isa lang, some will have 20 plus, some will have like 5, 10. It, it doesn't really matter because I don't think each country has a has a quota. You have to meet the standard set by the Chivni. And mm -hmm. if you're able to meet that, then they'll grant you a full scholarship program. Mm -hmm. So the second question a while ago, Nakatagal. So I started um, September, uh, the regular term of, of postgraduate here in London, here in UK, I should say. 2020? So every, 2020, yes. So mm -hmm. I am five months in the UK. In the middle of pandemic, I arrived. Galing <laughs> lang? Like, in, right in the thick of it, you <laughs> sa UK. Yeah, okay. So, you, yeah, you, you moved here in September. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I think um, it's quite hard to get, you know, like, uh, visas and stuff during the, those times. But because we are funded by the UK government, it was really easy. You mm -hmm. didn't really hard. We didn't have a hard time. Getting yeah. in, um, getting yeah. the visa is all supported because it's all free. You yeah, kasali na yun sa whole scholarship program. Yeah. The migrants kayo apart. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, and um, you came here in nung September, so autumn yun. Yes. Uh, what was yeah. what were your first impressions land after landing sa Heathrow Airport, <laughs> or have so you been to the UK before? Before nang Ano ka dito, uh, before you start your scholarship, it's my, it's my first time in UK. Oh, how was the, what was the first impression? Uh, dito dito? Ang pinaka maganda dun, Ira, is that ang sobrang nakakatawa sa UK is that meron mga Filipino na tumulong sa amin because they know we're students, you know. I, mm -hmm. I don't have any relative in, in the UK. So, upon arriving, hindi kami sabay sabay ng cohort dumate. What I mean mm -hmm. is that. <clears throat> It just be our our dates of arrival in the UK. I iba iba depends on start ng course, depends on university. So when mm -hmm. I arrived here, I didn't know anyone. I don't have a lot of like, I don't know a lot of people, na based sa UK. Mm -hmm. So what happens? There is a Filipina na na supporting all of these scholars. So there were scholars two years ago na na parang tumira doon sa Filipina na sinasabi ko. So when she found out that this year uh, I will be I will be coming to to you. Oh wait, last year I'll be coming to UK. I went to UK last year I should say. So nung nalaman niya pumasa ako sa Chevening Scholarship, we became friends on Facebook, on social media. So yeah. before I arrived, she was helping me settle, you know, like looking oh. for a house and all of these little things. So when I arrived at Petro Hindi siya parang, oh, wow, it's different. Kasi may Filipina agad na sumalubong sa akin. Mm, para look at that. To help you out. Like, you know, mm. para and that was like, just oh. her own self-initiative niya lang. She really yeah. just wanted to support the scholar. So, tingnan mo, di ba? May yes. Bahanian spirit na still alive. Oh, well and alive. Oh, oh. Really yeah. good. Like, mm -hmm. it, it was just not me. A lot of scholars uh, ay naging beneficiary ng tulong niya. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you shout out si Ate Bernadette? Of course. Mendoza. Thank you yeah. po, Ate Bernadette Mendoza. <laughs> yeah. Good thing sa pagtulong sa mga students dito. And mm -hmm. lalo na si Teto, because she knows na wala nga ito yung relatives and all. So she looks, she, she helps you like look for houses, yung mga basic settlements, uh, settlement requirements. You know, syempre pagdating mo, wala kang unan, wala kang kumot and all of these things. Nothing. Well, you're just her clothes, right? And Plus, you know that yeah. during the time when we arrived, may quarantine. That was the 14th. <laughs> Quarantine that you can't go out, uh -oh. you can't use grocery, you have to do deliveries and stuff. She mm. helped us with the provisional, you know, like the first two weeks of food. She was giving us like groceries and stuff for the first two weeks. So she's really a big help to all of us. Wow. Um, Dapat sana tawag St. Bernadette. <laughs> 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 <Diba? Yeah. laughs> so nice, so nice. Okay, Yung, so when you arrived here, parang may free time ka ba or did you have to go straight to uni yeah no 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 no. the first time uh, when we arrive we we have to to be in quarantine for 14 days Kailangan si Rio siya ah yes of course yeah of course yeah. Uh -huh. and part of the contract if the is that if you broke any rule in the uk your scholarship will be forfeited so mm. you really have to follow all of the like protocols laws From quarantine yeah. now. Because we're representing the Philippines, siempre. You don't want to to do some messy stuff in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. For 14 days, walang labasan talaga ng, 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 ng 
Mm-hmm. And I think that yung Shiva ni kasi from what I've read, yung mismo scholarship na yun is actually grooming future leaders in their respective countries. Parang yun ba yung main focus ng scholarship? Yes. Is to, you know, yeah, to, you know, so ed- to yeah to groom the next generation of leaders no? so really leadership focus siya di ba yung yung shivan yeah. scholarship and a lot of presidents of different countries are shifting scholars like the presidents presidents daming mga high level profiles yes mainly around political politics leaders. yes political leaders tsaka syempre yung ano business leaders then pero madaming mga president the prime minister mga ganun ba di ba in different countries so really super prestigious young scholar yeah the work is amazing mm-hmm. and parang i'm getting the sense na the na you have been um parang um, you're like an almost a natural born leader would you say because you started um your career quite young um in the navy in the philippine yeah. navy that's quite long. Pero, pero you were already like you know um you were already taking on leadership roles. It's not typical um, for someone assassinated mm-hmm. within the whole. I don't because I'm from corporate, diba? So I I don't yeah. think it's right to say military first, first, industry. By yeah. hindi naman eh. What would you call that? <laughs> from the Philippine Military Academy, it is a leadership school. So yung PMA. Oh, you, so you went to PMA. Yeah, yeah. yun yung yung mismong. Yeah, Philippine University. Military Acad- Academy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a school. It is a university in the Philippines. Yeah. Now, definitely rooms leaders because all of the graduates of the Philippine Military Academy will become military officers in the future. And if you become a military mm. officer, I wouldn't say I was an inborn leader, but I am definitely trained to be a leader, especially mm-hmm. when I was at the Military Academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will start from there, siyempre, when you graduate. Even in, in the academy itself, habang nag-aaral ka, you already have leadership positions. Kasi it's very, of course, it's militar- militarized. So, uh, fina-follow yung, yung like, military hierarchy and stuff. May strict protocols and standard operating. You really have to follow yung, no, oh, tama. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, is, mm-hmm. it is a military institution. It mm-hmm. is a military. You are living under, you know, under the military world. Yeah, yeah. Was that kind of like the the profession or the career that you were aspiring nung bata ka pa, nung maliit ka pa? Did you never dream really of... No. Never? No, no. I never really thought na I will be a military officer. Never really. When I was young, uh, in some interviews before that I did, I always wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted <laughs> to be a lawyer. Um, oh, yeah. I wanted, those were the things that I have in mind. I gusto ko maging mm-hmm. abogat, gusto ko well, mm-hmm. maging astronaut that's possible if mm-hmm. not cpa lawyer those are the things that i was wow I was layo naman from accounting to as i know so <laughs> <laughs> very Absolutely. wide no no so i know how what how did that um transpire then how did you get into the military so you went to pma is that something that you thought um i, I think this is an option for me or paano nangyari yon yeah, it is a, it's quite a long, interesting story. I didn't really fully apply for it. I was a walk-in applicant during the exam. And <laughs> I heard it is a free, yeah, it is a free um, education. Because, you know, the Philippine Milita- Military Academy is a school where, in, like, it's a university where, in, it, well, it's an academy where, in, pagka pasok mo, is that technically you're already, like, hired by the government as a cadet. It is a rank in the military. So while mm-hmm. it's your training, uh, like, full, full scholarship, everything is free. And so I was like, hmm, probably well, let's give this a try. Lalo na. I just walked in in an exam. As nakaswerte, I got in. Uh, the process itself, going to PMA, is not easy. Actually, it's even harder to get into PMA than to get into Chivning, I think. What? On, Talaga? On iba, yeah, yeah. iba yung, I would imagine, my rigorous assessments sila, like, physically and, of, of course, mentally, yung, my Normally, assessments and tests, or? About, Let's say twenty-five to thirty thousand who are interested in studying at PMA. So, sabi mo na to, for easy computation, let's say thirty thousand applicants. Mm-hmm. I think our batch were like twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand to apply. So that's a lot of people who would like to be cadets from PMA. Damn if you, yeah. Every year, yeah. Yeah, every year. That that is the application. It's like the normal yeah. application. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's hard from time to time. Okay. But let's say. Let's say twenty-five thousand, for example. 
sa evening nga, di ba sabi mo nga, 65,000 applicants, at least 1,600 ang kinukuha. 2.5% nga accept, yeah, yeah, acceptance in rate. In the Culinary Academy, when I joined the class, there were only 118 of us from from about 30,000. So that's that's even harder on ads. Oh, wow. uh, like, so I, mean, were, I don't want to do the maths, but that sounds like a very, very, very low acceptance rate. 0.04%. Something, oh. It's not even 1%. Why do you think that is? Talagang strict lang sila, or is it more the the caliber of the candidates coming in just not living up to, or uh -huh. not just? Because of course, uh, you have to meet all of the requirements. Ng mm -hmm. academy. not only that, uh, you have to meet all of yung yung requirements. Yah, hindi lang siya academically inclined. Mm -hmm. or physically, dapat you're physically fit, you're intellectually mm -hmm. capable. Mm -hmm. You have serious interviews because mm -hmm. uh, you will be a military officer you'll be a soldier so technically eh, lahat ng lahat ng selection process is that fitting para maging isang military leader ka in the future mm -hmm. so medyo rigorous yung uh, medyo arduous yung selection process tas rigorous yung training and mm -hmm. uh, marami din ng Filipinos na gusto talaga makapag-aral doon sa academy talagang kasi we all know it's a very prestigious academy. It is the prime, premier military institution, if not in Asia, of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Kaya, um, uh, maraming gustong makapasok. Lalo na free. Wala kang gagastos eh. Yung pasulit din, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You don't, mm -mm. kasi usually, diba, you know, you know this. Education in the Philippines is not yeah. free. Well, Especially it could be free, pero it's it's just not free. It's a luxury for many. Most of my education are are free. Even high school, uh, I was I was a partial scholar in high school. I had a free education in university. Now I'm studying for free in UK. So I think I'm really happy. <laughs> um, uh, I think so, I think you know a trick or two about you know excelling in you know, so education with almost um, zero out outlay. Now you don't have to <laughs> be really good at getting scholarships. No, what do you say? I think because I look for them. So sa ating mm. mga Sa mga Filipinos na ngayon, if you ask me, it's like, I why do you have like quite a lot of like foreign schooling or and dami mong experiences ng pag aral abroad? As I told you, Ira, before, I also like studied in Australia and the US, so I have all of this training, and they're all for free, I didn't spend for them. So, um, paano mong, paano mong yun nagawa? parang siguro ang swerte, dumarating. I think the difference is that because I look for them, di ba? May kasabihan nga ang sabi nila, it's better to talk to one person than wait for 100 person to talk to you to win friends so i think mm. it's opportunities Marila, let, let's just let that sink in ah. Parang, ano yeah. Siya? yeah i like that i like that quote <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about it because yeah yeah it's better to at least make that one connection with one yeah. real person as opposed to wait for one ka and um say again uh, this is another i know partner I wanted to cover maybe later. You're pretty well connected then diba within you know the basta madami kang like you're pretty good at networking, I'd say T L D R for my advocacies and all of the things that I've been doing on the side, it is important. Plus I mean Siguro, you were asking a while ago, are you a, you're probably an inborn leader. Probably I'm not, but I'm an inborn um people person. I think I'm always fascinated by meeting people you know like mm -hmm. having new networks culture uh, mm -hmm. style I, I i like people i like connecting with people i like working with people it's so like I a natural curiosity that, about others that, that is in you already because ever since i was young i know I'm, I'm quite friendly i'm quite out there you know i'm not introvert mm -hmm. i'm very extrovert mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is probably i was trained to be like that but being a people person, probably that's what I I am since I was a kid. I'm always, mm -hmm. alam mo friends. I always make sure, you know, you're like, hindi naman parang joker of the group. You're always like fun to be with. You feel that people want mm -hmm. to be with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always one. There's always one within a group. May isa, there's always one. Yeah. Lagging, yung lagging. You know, you know, talking to people, laging kinakausap yeah. ibang tao, kahit yung mga bata. There's always when I think, oh, parang ikaw yun niya eh. Diba? Yeah, ikaw yung, yeah, yung extrovert talaga sa group. On this particular side, 
And then I have a group of friends from this particular side. At sa nangyayari, namamerge sila together because of you. Like, Ikaw yung I group. Have a, uh -huh. Oh, kasi you have a group of friends from the military, and then I have a group of friends from my childhood. Mm -hmm. Tapos because they're both my group of friends, and nangyayari, I, I, I link them together hanggang sa nagiging isang group sila because mm -hmm. you, were, you were the bridge between the military life. Yeah. and your yeah, childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Going back to the opportunity Scho side. Yeah, in scholarship, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, I have all of these opportunities. It's not because I was just waiting for them. I was looking for them. You know, I will search this, the internet, look for like, okay, what are the next, you know, like, ano ba mga scholarship na meron sa ganito? Like, right now, I'm already looking for a scholarship for my PhD. I'm not waiting for an institution to offer me like, oh, by the way, you did scholarship, uh, achieving scholarship in the UK, you did master's, do you want to be funded for a PhD? Uh, we're offering you this. I won't wait for that. Ako mismo ang maghahanap ng mga open opportunities, then I will email them. Like, by the way, I'm now studying in the UK. I'm graduating this year. This will be my field of study. Uh, if you are interested about this particular field of study, I would like to pursue PhD. Do you want to fund it? See, I, 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 I knock sa mga pituan. I, I, I look for opportunities. Mm -hmm. so that's, yeah, that's <laughs> very, very interesting. Because on... On the surface, if someone would kind of like observe and, and look at you now, it it looks like parang yun nga na swertehan ka. You just got given all yeah, these yeah. opportunities. Pero actually hindi. It, ikaw talaga mismo ang gumawa ng gumawa. You made those opportunities for yourself. Para kang trailblazer ba? You made your own path. Because yeah, I think yeah, I think what's important there, ang key takeaway jan talaga is you start with a vision in mind. Ko ano talaga yung gusto mong gawin, di ba? It sounded like that's exactly what you did. Kasi nga, you just started this scholarship, pero alam mo na yung next step for you. I think having that kind of clarity helps with figuring out how to get there. Basta unahin mo yung end, yung end goal in mind, tama ba? Would you agree? Alam mo na agad kung ano yung plan mo. Kasi turo din ng nanay ko sa akin dati. I remember mm -hmm. when I was... Hanggang ngayon, well, binabanggit palagi, bukang bibig ng magulang namin sa amin, na mm -hmm. kami, ang, parang, ikaw ang gumagawa ng kapalaran mo. Sabi sa amin, anak, alam mo, ikaw ang gagawa ng kapalaran mo. Mm -hmm. uh, parang, oh, I believe in destiny, this is destiny. Oh, we can say that. But, ikaw ang gagawa ng sarili mong kapalaran. So, if, if, if you have that power to do your own kapalaran, then you can, you're right, you know, like, think of what you want to be, visualize on it. Act on it. That is important. Hindi pwedeng parang balang araw, no. mag-aaral mm -hmm. okay, balang araw, mag ako. You really have to work on it. I always tell the Filipino youth, as you know, in the background that I we had before when we were chatting, I run a youth leadership program and I am a huge advocacy, advocate of youth empowerment. I always teach the Filipino youth. Um, you know, like, I will have lots of stories for you, lots of, like, um, uh, like probably like inspiring takeaways, but I just want you to remember two words. Two words lang. Kalimutan nyo na lahat ng pinag-usapan natin. Just two words. I and now. It's simple. Letter I and now. Why? Because walang gagawa kung hindi ikaw. You really have to start it on your own. And it is not tomorrow. It is not later. Do it now. Everything that you want to do, do it now, like, kasi yung, alam mo, ibang tao, Ira, para ah, balang araw, magta-travel din ako. Balang araw, eh, yung iba nga, di ba? Balang araw, papayat ako. Balang araw, eh, eh, papayat ako, sexy ako. I mean, like, I'm not saying it's, it's bad or anything. Some people think of that. Pero, mm -hmm. what if they start now by mm -hmm. eating right and exercising? Then they can achieve that. That mm -hmm. is important. Two words, I and now, as simple as that, di ba? Walang magic. Mm -hmm. so if you want to do something, you want to do something in the future, you want to learn something, don't procrastinate. Just do it now. And you don't wait for people to do it for you. You do it because it's I and now. I think, yeah, I think in yung main yung punchline don is don't wait for other people to do it for you. Kasi yeah. ikaw talaga yung hawak mo talaga yung, like you said, yung kapa. And that's another word I haven't heard in such a long time. Kapala, no, right? yeah. yung future. <laughs> so, like, you know, coming back to old, yung mga Tagalog vocabularies ko lumalabas yeah, yeah. mo naman ulit. Yeah, ikaw talaga yung may hawak ng kapalaran mo. And um, kasi, di ba, it's easier to just um, push blame 
whether yeah. sa circumstances or sa, sa childhood mo or sa situation mo ngayon. And just, um, resi- just resign na, ganito na ako eh, wala na akong magagawa eh. Kasi ganyan, kasi ganyan. Ang daming rason. Madali, madali yun, di ba? Madali yun. Mas mahirap na ano, tanggapin na hawak mo talaga yung mangyayari sa buhay mo. You just have to believe that. And uh, it's actually true kasi the number of excuses that you have, um, there are just as many examples of people who yeah. overcame adversity w- with worse yeah. conditions than you do. Or, you, yeah. you know, you had, di ba? So, it's to the coin. Some say it's like, hindi, tanggap ko na. Ito na yung kapalaran ko. Ganto na lang talaga ako. Or, you can also accept, like, accept the fact like, hindi lang ito ang kaya kong gawin at kaya kong baguhin ang sitwasyon ko ngayon. It's it's the same mind. I mean, it's the same person with a different mindset. Yung sinabi mo nga kanina, di ba? Na yung ibang tao, hindi, ito na. Tanggap ko na. Ito na yung kapalaran ko. Hanggang ganito. Ito na yon, Ito na ako. Tanggap ko na to. That's the same person. Change the mindset into like, uh, tanggap ko na uh, parang ito ang sitwasyon ko, pero alam ko na I can do better. Alam ko na I can improve myself. Alam ko na there's other ways to be a better person, to improve to level up it's just the change of mindset and it's just all started from from that same person you know kasi kung ikaw sabi niya nga hindi tanggap ko na ito na yon kapalaran ko i'll just do this uh, you know ito na yon just shift that into the other side of the coin na sinasabi ko sa ina why not think na ang kapalaran ko is that i know i can change this yan ang default ko i can level up you know yeah, I think it, it doesn't really, I think huh, it doesn't require a radical change of mindset. But it, mm. it just challenge your own belief. Kunyari, kung sinasabi mo sa sarili mo, ay ganito na talaga eh. Ask yourself, ganito na lang ba talaga? What if kung, yeah. bak, eh, what if kung hindi? Diba? And then just, and then start entertaining that thought. And then, see, yeah, I, that's where I get my inspiration from personally, actually. Kasi, kasi I mean, all of us. Uh, obviously, me not excluded. May mga limiting beliefs din tayo. Pero I try. I started to train myself to call my call myself out. Na nahuhuli ko yung sarili ko na nag you know you know yung parang yung negative self talk ba? Yeah. So manay na practice It takes years. Yeah. Takes years na ikaw sa pagsasabi mo mismo sarili mo. Oi, nag negative self talk. Paano kung ibahin natin yung story? What would happen kung ibahin mo yung takbo ng isip mo? It, it's hard, pero yeah. once you get used to it, parang default na yan eh. Like for me, I think, ano, parang switch na yan. Pag na, it only takes me like a second or two na marirealize ko, ayan na, nag-nega ka na naman, you know, yeah. switch na. But it took me, I don't know, a decade to be, to have that. that. Oh, matagal. I yeah. think you like the story. So, have you heard about the, I think it was all over Facebook for a long time, but I've been using yeah. this, this story for all of my talks. Uh, because it is in line with what you're saying about the mindset. Mm-hmm. So there was an old Cherokee, also like an old E. Uh, meron siyang apo. Tapos yung apo niya, tinuturuan niya about life. Sabi nung apo sa, ay nung lolo doon sa apo. Alam mo apo, sabi niya ganyan. Natagulibun ka na lang para mas madali natin ma-explain. Um, sa lahat ng tao, meron yan dalawang wolf inside, inside sa tao. Meron yan, bad wolf and the good wolf. Have you heard of this story before? So lahat daw ng tao, meron yang bad wolf at saka good wolf na palaging nag-aaway. Na palaging nag-aaway. Constantly fighting. So, basta pinanganak ka daw sa mundo, meron yang dalawang wolf na nasa loob mo. They're constantly fighting. This is the bad wolf and the good wolf. Who do you think wins? Okay, so diba? A lot of people would say, oh, probably it's the bad wolf kasi nagiging nega. Pero sabi ng chieftain, oh, it's not. It's the one you feed. So, it, it makes sense. So, how, what do you mean? Sabi ng bata, well, the good wolf is nabubuhay siya because of love, hope, inspiration, happiness. And just pure attention. Yeah. Just entertaining those thoughts. Nabubuhay na sila sa ganon, di ba? The bad wolf lives because of insecurities, because of frustrations, disappointments, because of, you know, so, lahat ng negative thought. So, if you feed the negative thought, you're feeding the bad wolf. And so, the bad wolf is winning over the good wolf inside of you. Mm-hmm. So, if you will just feed the good wolf all the time by gratitude, by positivity, by love, 
by by happiness. As I mo, para ang hirap naman yan. How can it be hard? You have all of your friends and families around you. You just have to look at at this little details na hindi natin napapansin. Like yeah, you know. Again, punchline, little details. It doesn't have to be this grand, yung super, I mean, like happiness kind of like, you know, ecstatic. Um, gesture. It starts with something small, because that's where it all starts. Start with something small, and then dadagdaga na yan. Like in this example, konyari pag ako, if I'm feeling down, yeah, no, no, videos or I listen to like uplifting music, yun lang. And matatawa kahit konti lang yung matatawa mo dun sa cute na cat video or ano mang cute jan na video na nakakatuwa lang ba? Parang it switches your mood already, and then once you get started. Madaling dagdagan, and then you'll find other reasons to be happier. Yun parang it's a way to get out of your rut. Pero syempre hindi naman may iwasa na, True. you know, we, we, we get our well, moments, di ba? Tayo. Pero right. the point is, you have to, you know, you need to find your way back, di ba? Yeah, and it starts with it's always like that. Yeah. It's right. to feel bad, to feel sad, to feel mad. That's human being, but don't stay there. That's mm, what I'm tama. trying to say. You have all of the rights to feel sad, to feel bad, to feel, you know, you're, you're humans, that's normal. But the, the biggest uh, thing is that don't stay there. Feel Bahay. that, but stay there for long, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also curious huh, um, about the time that you spent, or you actually are still with the Philippine Navy, but yung, yung journey mo there, because I'm guessing, or I'm assuming that had a lot to do with your sort of your, I guess your mental resilience and your emotional resilience. Not to train. Yeah. Do you, would you say na yung training mo or your experience with the Navy has mm -hmm. kind of like um, contributed to that mental strength? Definitely. Definitely. And how, how, in what way? Because you know, I'm just I'm asking. Say now everyone will have the luxury to go that yeah. you know path. But what would be? I, I'm just curious to to learn about your experience there and how it contributed yeah. to you know your your mental strength, ba, if you like. Yeah, sure. Um, I wouldn't say 100%. It's just because of the Navy, the uh, mental resilience, like the mental strength, emotional stability, and all. I think it's also part of the upbringing. Of course, when when we went to the academy to train, 17 years old, ka na, uh, important pa rin yung foundation. Na. You're saying na. That's young. Right. 17 years old, no? I, yeah. I, I was still like 16, turning 17. When I, I was 16 when I applied. Yeah. Anyway, so is this the background? So by the way, Ira, I'm I'm already like 20 years in the service. I've been serving in the military for 20 years now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and sadly, I'm no longer below 30. I'm I'm me I'm on my mid 30s. <laughs> I have to correct yeah. you there. No longer wow. less than 30. Anyway, so going back, um, is it with just is it just with the Navy? Probably it's also with our faith. Kung ano ang, ang mm -hmm. upbringing mo, ano ang foundation mo in your family, uh, also in your mindset. Pero, syempre, it helps yung sa military. Lalo na, we were away from the family for a long time. And we were studying mm -hmm. in Baguio. We weren't with the family. Uh, yeah. Tapos, when you graduate, you will be assigned in the field. You will be away from your family. And you start, you'll start a career na hindi ka regular umuwi every day. It is, you really have to be strong about this because hindi ka pwedeng homesick ng konti uwi kasi you you chose duty you know you're serving the country it is not just like the love of the family that matters now and your emotional feelings it is there but you're sometimes setting as you, you have to set aside that for a while because you have to do to do your duty first i think so, in your case i think it's focusing on it really sounds cheesy but ayun talaga eh. i think that's the most um descriptive term I could find. It's great in focusing on the greater good, which is oh, yeah. serving serving the country, diba. Right? And yeah. I think that um overrides any of yung mga personal sent sentiments more. But I think um it requires a certain type of personality to make that sacrifice, diba? Right? Uh, the the moment you join the military, you are you already took an oath. You know? You know you what you were you know Champlain, oh, yeah. Yes, coming in. That's what you signed up for. You yeah. pledged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember, 
being in this career is not something that was forced to you. It was your choice to be here. Mm, okay. Be here and you're ready to, to face all of the challenges and you're ready mm -hmm. to accept all of the rules of the game, I should say. Because if not, then leave the military because probably the military is not for you. You can naman pinipil it. Yeah, it's all voluntary. Oh, yeah. Okay. The military. Pursue a different career if you don't think you can, you can, you know, um, perform or like pro, mm -hmm. you know, do the, the oath. How was the reaction of your family nung decide kong sumali sa PMA? Were they supportive or nagulat or? Very surprising because I didn't tell my parents that I'm huh? going to PMA, di ba? But when huh? I I want Secret my father. Oh, because I was a walk-in, remember? So <laughs> I, I, I did not like ask for permission to apply and all of these things. I mm -hmm. got in. My father, father found out about it. Because the result was result. I got in. Of course, they need to tell them. I was left. You're going to be away, right? It's going to be obvious that you know, you're going to yeah, be somewhere else. I was 18 years old. So I would need parental consent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I would need my parental consent. I was too young. So I have I told them it's like uh, oh by the way, pumasa ako ng PMA. And they was like, "What? Talaga? Kailangan ka ng exam." Alam mo ba, ngayon pala, pangarap niya pala before and all of this. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, my mom wasn't really very I would say 100% supportive yet. Kasi, you know, mother instinct, worried oh, military academy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lumabas yung maternal instinct ni mommy oh, nung nalaman niya na mag PMA ka. Yeah. Hirap dyan, baka hindi mo kaya, baka, mag, di ba gusto mo mag-CPA lawyer, mag-CPA mag mm -hmm. ka na lang, okay ka naman na dyan sa ano, alam mo yun. Pero eventually, siguro like, uh, those were like few few weeks after. Hanggang nung papasok na ako, my mom talked to me and said like, yun na ba talaga yung decision mo, gusto mo yan. <laughs> if you like that, we'll support you. So, mm -hmm. when you, so when you enter the... Pag pumasok ka sa PMA, can you, kasi di ba yung, you told me earlier, and again, I'm learning, yeah, yung Armed Forces of the Philippines has got three yeah. branches, yung yeah. mismong Army, Navy, at Air Force, di ba? Yeah. Pag pumasok ka sa PMA, pwede mo bang piliin kung saan ka pupunta? Kunyari, yes. kung gusto mo mag maging piloto or yeah. Navy, yeah. may Navy seal pa, yun pala, may Navy yeah, seal yeah. sa Philippines, anong tawag sa kanya? Yeah, 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 so I'll give you a background over this, kasi I think sa mga nanonood ngayon, baka hindi mm -hmm. na rin sila update so, mm -hmm. pag sinabi kasi nila Armed Forces of the Philippines, ang iniisip nila palagi, ah, Army yan. It's not mm -hmm. like... Ako rin. I'm one of them. So, I have to put my hand <laughs> up. Yeah. Oo. Miseducated ako. Has three branches of service. Yun yung Army, Air Force, and the Navy. So, mm -hmm. same. Pag pumakas sa PMA, when you graduate, you can choose a branch of service. Where do you want to serve ba? Do you want to serve in the Army? Do you want to serve in the Air Force? Or do you want to serve in the Navy? So, obviously, we know, like, even the common... Uh, parang generalization. Pag sinabing Navy, barko. These are the warships, dagat. Submarines. Big. Submarines, oh, submarine. yes. Oh. <laughs> Air Force, piloto. Jet. Top you know, Gun. Sinabing, And I'm, I'm just, just, just blurting out stereotypes na. Si na Maverick, siya si Goose. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ma Ma Maverick in, in, you know, like the Top Gun? Oo. Oh, oh. They're Navy officers. They are not Air Force officers. Bakit sila? But, but they're they pilots. Naval pilots. I will go may there. May naval pilots then. Oh my God. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. Wow, okay. Oh, it is, it, di ba may branches of service tayo? We have the Army, we have the Air Force, we have the Navy. Mm -hmm. Sa the Philippine Navy where I belong, we have Navy pilots. Yun yung Top Gun. They are Navy pilots. They are not, they are not U.S. Air Force. They are U.S. Navy pilots. We have mm -hmm. the Navy skills. Under the Philippine Navy, we have the Philippine Marines under the Philippine Navy. Mm -hmm. so, Anon, mga Philippine fleet uh, people, we call them like the uh, white caps. Ito yung mga nagdrive ng barko. I'm one of those. White caps. Bakit white yeah. caps? Kasi white yung cap? Like literally white yung cap? Or? <laughs> well, it's, it's <laughs> a legal terminology that we use. Well, mm -hmm. probably we can say that, pero it's a term that. Uh, you see like the sea, sea foam, like if you're in the sea, basta pagka umaalo, mm -hmm. nakikita mo white sa dagat, it's called white caps. Parang ah, ito mas naging. Ah, kasi oh, I think that would be the only thing you'll be seeing for months, no? Pag nasa dagat right, ka. Right. Mm. And what made you choose the Navy over in Air Force at saka yung Army? No, that's a good question. Every time I'm asked about that first, 
Um, and obviously you have to be able to swim, diba? Right? Yun ba yung main requirement? Oh, yeah. I think it is the branch of service where I can best serve. Uh, you have to like think, saan ka ba talaga papakinabangan ng, ng Pilipinas? If I will serve in the army, will I be very happy to serve in the army? If I serve in the Air Force, will I be very happy? Or in the Navy? I just thought, and I feel like the Navy is the best branch of service for me because it is where I can best serve. Why? First, I, I love traveling. You can travel a lot if you join the Navy. Um, not to mention, I love the uniform. <laughs> mm -hmm. the Navy oh my uniform. God, it's so slick. Really? Yes, mm -mm. Talagang, yeah. Mm -mm. And sharp. And not very only sharp, that, yeah. the Navy is a very technical profession. And um, it has different specializations. So that's a, I think that's it. I, I always believe the Navy is the branch of service where I can best serve. So I chose it. So you, you get, I would assume now during your training, um, you get exposure to all three branches so that you, you can get an idea yeah, of what goes down on the each. Uh -uh. Everyone is trained the same, similar. And mm. there are different subjects if you decide to join the Air, the Air Force, the Navy, and the, the Army. Um, some classes, they can choose on their gradu graduation year. Some On our case, we were able to choose earlier. I think we were in second, thir third year yet. Third year, para meron ng parang specialization. Para okay, these are the Navy cadets, so meron ka ng additional subjects mm -hmm, na mm -hmm. Navy na. Yung mga Air Force, meron additional subjects from Air Force. Same as with the Army. Pero all of your base training are the same. All of the basic military education, the same. Um, para din sa kaalaman ng lahat, Ira, you know, the Philippine Military Academy is like a university. May degree ka. So, I, I, there were... During our time, we, have, we even have courses. I, I studied Bachelor's of Science in Management. We have engineering. You can select a course then? Sa yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Wow, yes, we okay. Have, we have information science, management, and mm -hmm. engineering. Pero, engineering? Yeah. Engineering. Uh -huh. Wow, okay. It varies. At some classes, tinatanggal yung courses. But all of you will graduate a Bachelor's of Science degree. Which means that para kang pumasok sa university. Same nung pinag-aaralan ng isang university student sa UP or sa UST. I wouldn't say very, very similar yung, yung lahat ng subject. Pero lahat ng core subjects ng, ng, ng general tertiary education, if that is the right term, is the same. Ang pagkakaiba lang is that you are under a military training while studying college. So para kang yeah. nag-regular ROTC training ng four years habang ikaw ay nag-aaral. At doon ka nakatira sa Mm -mm. You stay fit, huh? Because you're forced to exercise, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. training. <laughs> we always have like, like uh, physical fitness exams. Even in the in the military, when you graduate, you have this quarterly uh, physical fitness tests. Quarterly, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have annual annual medical exams. Uh, mm -hmm. You really have to be physically fit to be in this profession. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, very ano, talaga rigorous yung, yung assessments nila dyan. And they regularly yeah, check your... That's just the military your... part. Yeah? That's just the military uh -oh. part. That's here in the UK, the course that I am pursuing now is so in line with what I wanted to do. Um, if you remember, yeah, my course is security, peace building and... Peace diplomacy. building and diplomacy. <laughs> peace building, like as a course, di ba? Imagine. That's I'm, I'm fascinating. Youth empowerment and sustainable promotion of sustainable peace in the Philippines. So, punta na tayo dun sa next part ng aking ginagawa sa Pilipinas. So, I'm not just a military officer back home. I'm a strong advocate of youth advocacy and promotion of sustainable peace. So, I have projects. Um, I, I launched a project. Uh, this is under the Junior Chambers International, which is I am one of the uh, board of directors of JCI Makati. JCI Makati, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a chapter of the Junior Chambers International, which is, mm -hmm. you know, a non-profit organization around the world. Uh, it's a global non-profit organization. Anyway, so I had I launched a project uh, which is called Sa uh, Isip Kapayapaan Sa Lupang Kapayapaan Sa Lupang Hinirang Sa Isip Sa Salita At Sa Gawa. So this is a program um, na awarded in the Asia Pacific Peace is Possible campaign as a finalist. Mm -hmm. 10,000 applicants. Um, oh, wow. This program was one of the final three, and we represented the Philippines. So I'm very proud of that. Because um, 
Siyempre, naging English na siya kasi parang peace in my motherland in thoughts, in actions, and in words. Yeah, kasi yung sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa, sa panatang makabayan yan, di ba? Kinuha yan sa, sa pledge natin. Panatang makabayan, yeah, so basta pledge to our home country ba yun sa English. Yun talaga yeah. ang inspiration ng mm-hmm. program. So, mm-hmm. bakit, bakit ako nag-launch ng ganitong klaseng project? Because I thought of like, this is my little contribution on promoting sustainable peace. So, what I do is that I have I'm working with teams in partnership with, you know, with the Department of National Defense. I even ask for their support, other local government units, other advocacy groups, of course, JCI Makati and other JCI chapters. We go to like mm, schools for elementary students, Kenya. That's we conduct programs to promote sustainable peace to them. Alam mo yung parang, parang you tell the young kids, lalo na I am a military officer, so I can be there in my uniform, do an outreach program, para sa kanila, para din sa parents. Um, we do livelihood seminars for the parents, instilling in them na yung military, the armed forces of the Philippines, ay kakampi mo. The hindi armed forces of the Philippines, you know? You know, mm-hmm. some other groups in the Philippines uses this na, hindi, kalaban ng military, kaya sumanib na kayo sa mga ganito klaseng leftist group or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mention that. But, Uh, what we are doing in this is that we are promoting sustainable peace para malaman ng mga bata na elementary students na kahit may mga naka-uniform. I will invite some of my friends from the military to speak their, to speak about their experiences, to tell the kids na, alam mo, dati, mahirap akong bata, mahirap akong galing ako sa mahirap na pamilya, uh, ganito ang <clears throat> background ko, o mangingisda si tatay, o magsasaka si nanay tsaka si tatay. Pero nag-aral ako ng mabuti kasi alam ko na na gusto ko maging sundalo at uh, ako ngayon sundalo ako uh, nagsaserve ako sa ganito uh, sino gusto maging sundalo sa inyo kasi nung bata ako mayroong mga tumutulong sa aming sundalo ako nurse ako yung isa naman tapos nagjoin ako sa nurse corps so these kids would have an option kung ikaw ay bata you are grade 3 grade 4 grade 5 you will remember that when you were young there was this group of military people that went into your school Conducted the leadership training. I do that. That is the symposium that I do to them. Um, I will have, we will have coordinations with the principal or with the Department of Education. Um, para magkaroon ng one day seminar ng leadership, parang leadership team building seminar yung mga bata facilitated by us. And then um, we, 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 we try to, to, to introduce other options and possibility to them that they can join the military, that the military is you know, their friends, this, the military is there to support and protect them. Mm-hmm. So, interesting, yeah. interesting point. And then I just picked up on, you mentioned leadership training ng mga bata. So, yes. like, starting from such a young age na, ano ba, seven, eight, nine, mga ganun ba? Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are, like, elementary students. Particularly, we target the, you know, the mga student Council, pupil supreme council. I think they call it like that. Ito yung mga parang mga presidents ng mga classrooms. Ah. Oh. Students are already like. Actually, right. Yeah, it can start with that. It starts with that. Yung mga class president, class president, leadership position na rin yun, di ba? Tama. Within. They are the, leaders. The childhood. Oh, oh, tama. We tama. get them. So sila yung mga nagiging recipient ng leadership training na pinuprovide namin. Okay, uh, I can imagine and they must be so they must have been so impressed no seeing you know yung mga yung mga sundalo yung mga taga navy in uniform na kinakausap sila di ba imagine oh, pag bata karamihan lala na pag boys yung mga boys sila yung favorite nila usually di ba sundalo doctor as nandiyan na sila nandiyan lang sila naka uniform pa di ba I can just picture that in my head yung you know it's a, it must have been a very impressionable moment for them then Oh, oh. Tsaka parang, you know, like, this, <clears throat> this soldiers plays with them, uh, play with them. Parang ang hirap kasi na pagkabata ka, natatakot ka kasi may baril sundalo, you know? Pero ngayon, uh, nakikita <laughs> yes. mo, pala sila, mababait pala sila. Ay, mga yeah. kuya pala sila. Uh-uh, uh-uh. They yeah. their pala. Changes their perception about the, the profession or the people in general, di ba? And this is just a little initiative that I thought of doing, which mm-hmm. is running for two years now. And, um, with all of this part, amazing partner partners that we have, and also an international acknowledgement because of that, because the purpose of it is very noble, and not only that, um, it, yung long term effect sa mga Filipino youth. 
Yeah, it, it, yeah, it will carry on. Chaka Apala, you mentioned sustainable peace. Can you yeah. explain um, what you mean by that? Oh, yeah. So, how does so it take, me, what, in what form does it you know, adding, come to play? Pag sinabi mo kasi na parang, oh, uh, I don't know, what is peace for you? I was like, um, as a person, what is peace for you? Kapag before, that's what I thought. Peace is like peace of mind. Payapa, walang war. Everything is like, okay, that's peace. Peace is absence of war. You don't. Oh, no. oh. mm -mm. Because now I'm studying peace building in a deeper sense. You understand that peace is not just that. Peace should be sustainable in a way na parang if, for example, there's a conflict. For example, there's a conflict in Mindanao. We all know there's a conflict in Mindanao. Pag nawala ba yung war there, would you say the place is already peaceful? That is just negative peace. Parang what? There's a term such as negative peace, there is. It's negative peace. Because the absence of war is negative peace. We would like to pursue mm. positive What is positive peace? That is, you don't want the conflict to recur. Mm. Not just stopping the conflict, but not letting that conflict to happen again. That is the sustainable peace. And is this the peace that the people can attain? Mm -hmm. well, for example, you so... must be Peace building process, but will they be very happy to sustain this kind of peace that you are offering to them? Mm -hmm. no, it's very technical, but it's, I know you get what I mean. There's uh, so many layers, no? and I think you're right. Um, again, food for thought there. It sounds like yung guerra or yung wars is just a symptom of something bigger. Kaya oh. coming back to what you said, pag mo pag wala ng guerra, Ibig sabihin ba na wala na yung main cause na bakit nag -iera? Is that what you're saying? Tama ba? Yeah, yeah. Diba? It can uh -huh. be cool in a way, but it's negative peace. Kasi what you really have to think is that do you think the people feel at peace? Do you think they are heard? Do you think yung peace process ba na nangyayari is in line with what they want? Mm -hmm. Kasi may rason kung bakit sila nag-rebelde ano, nag or nagwala. May rason yun, di ba? Kung masaya sila, hindi naman sila magaganon. Tama. We can say that. Anyway, so it's it's more of that. Yeah. So I, I mm -mm. thought of like pushing that advocacy. Uh, sustainable. Yes. So how of course, when the empowerment. I love mm -mm. the Philippines. I love mm -mm. serving the Filipino youth. Yeah. Um, so in youth leaders organization of the Philippines no, this, then. This is the youth leaders of the Philippines is a group that is a it's a different story from these advocacies that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. The the project that I'm doing with JCI is, mm -hmm. is different from the youth leaders of the Philippines. The youth leaders of the Philippines came out because it um, started in 2012. I am in partnership with the Asia mm -hmm. Pacific Center for Student Development. Mm -hmm. This is a group that trains high school and uh, college students of leadership. We conduct uh, an annual leadership training attended by 1,000 more or less student leaders from around the Philippines, as far as Tawi-Tawi, as, as far as mula, mula Apari hanggang Tawi-Tawi. Um, hanggang uh, lampas pa ng holo. Tawi-Tawi talaga. <laughs> students yeah, who 1, are like na, the group. student leaders in their respective communities or schools, pinapadala yan sila ng kanilang mga schools para mag-attend ng National Leadership Symposium. So it is a three-day leadership program Na and I am one of the facilitators of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, 1,000 future leaders of the Philippines. These are already the cream of the crop of the respective provinces of the respective schools. You mm -hmm. see, they're representing the school. They're representing the communities. So you have the 1,000, like parang cream of the crop ng mga youth, Filipino youth. Every mm -hmm. year, nagpapadala yung mga iba-ibang schools. And then we gather them for a... Uh, uh, a national leadership symposium. As I've said, I'm one of the facilitators. And then out of that group, um, I will recruit some of the members who would like to join the youth leaders of the Philippines. Siyempre, merong additional requirement for us. Yung hinahanap namin, yung mga talagang, although mayaman ka, mahirap ka, pero you have the passion to serve, you are, you have, you know, like, um, contributed to the society, uh, you are a real local community leader, we scout them from that group. That was yeah, regardless of their financial standing or financial background. And you miss contribution talaga yung tinitingnan nyo. You look yeah. at that. Yeah. yeah, it's really merit-based, you would say. Yeah. Diba? We will have a team to look at their, like, they will apply, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we'll ask them, like, we'll interview them over the phone. We'll ask them about what they've done. And then we decide who will get in into that group. By now, we have um, almost 1,000 members of the Youth Leaders of the Philippines group. These are all solid leaders of their communities of their, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we guide them with opportunities. So I am with with a, a core group that I invited some colleagues na gusto ring makatulong sa Filipino youth. So ang pinaka-purpose nitong group na to is to open opportunities for this for these youth leaders, not only to develop their leadership, pero yung networking nga na sinasabi ko sa iyo. Like for that's example, the other thing that's already that on its own is such a big deal already because getting all these potential leaders in one room and yeah. imagine the connections they're going to build and that can just amplify as soon as they leave that you know, that convention. Imagine what they can do after, diba? Getting all those great minds together. It's really very... I'm getting goosebumps, huh? I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh -oh. the community that we're building for this, um, mm -hmm. Filipino youth leaders, it's not just a group. It is a community. We would like them to know each other because, alam mo, pagdating ng time, probably 30 years, 20 years, probably, these are the leaders of our country. Mm -hmm. And as yeah. early as this age, they are like 15, 14, 13, 12. Oh, that young, huh? Other, then they can support each other. Ito, bakit maganda siya? Some students there are student leaders in their own schools, di ba? Like for example, siya yung student council president ng school. And they have issues in their school about bullying. They have issues about particular issues sa school nila ng ganitong whatever issue. And they can't solve it on their own. They will solicit the help of other leaders from that group na parang, anong ginawa nyo sa school nyo? Paano nyo na-solve yung ganitong issue? And then the, the presidents of this other communities will give them like tips. So parang alam mo yung mm. adaptation practices. Collective intelligence of the group, nandiyan oh, lang, oh. On, speed, on speed dial lang, tanong ka lang, nandiyan oh. pulong. It's so powerful, so powerful. It is. Oh. And not only that, regarding the opportunities I'm telling you, sabi ko nga, hindi naman lahat ng mga kabataang Filipino na nandiyan sa group na yan ay may access sa opportunities. Yung ibang mga opportunities like scholarship program na babalita hanggang Manila lang, hindi umaabot sa mga probi-probinsya. Ay, meron palang exchange program sa Japan. Ay, meron palang exchange program sa Korea na open application. Kailangan mo lang mag-apply. Hindi umaabot sa kanila. Hindi nila alam. Yeah. Hindi nila alam. Kasi aabot man sa kanila, tapos na yung deadline. Mm -hmm. Ay, meron palang poster... Meron palang poster making contest ang isang company na kapag nanalo ka scholarship program sa university. Ah meron pa lang essay writing contest na kailangan mo lang mag-submit ng essay at kapag ikaw ang nanalo, meron kang scholarship grant o pag ikaw nanalo may cash prize. You know, they, hindi na nila nalalaman itong ganitong opportunities kasi hindi na umaabot sa kanila. At kung umabot man sa kanila, it's late. Too late. Kasi, uh, lampas na yung deadline. Uh. So we have a team in our group who are looking for these opportunities, and then they post it to them. La lahat sila parang, oh, merong scholarship program, or for example, may exchange program sa Japan, mag-open for next year, ang application starts May this year. Mm -hmm. Dahil na-publish na siya, we send it to these people in this group so that they know, ay, meron palang ganito. Or now, I have the option if I would like to take this opportunity or not. So yeah. instead of them knocking for the opportunities, we are the one knocking for them and then providing it to them. Mm -hmm. so, Very so, diba? perfect, perfect example of leveling the playing field. Ika nga, di ba? Ikpantay-pantay yung opportunities nila. And you make it, you make it um, equal for everyone. Kasi yeah. nga, you obviously are aware of the disparities then with, with regards to access to opportunities, di ba? Depende kung saan ka galing. Depende talaga sa background mo. But it sounds like, pag nandiyan ka sa youth leaders of the Philippines, pantay-pantay kayo. You all have the same access to opportunities which i think is a great thing lalo na sa mga sa mga kabataan na hindi hindi lang talaga based sa manila where the center of the action unfortunately always is pag medyo remote ka na kahit nasa visayas ka pa nga lang you, you can yeah. easily be left out on these opportunities on the good thing about it like if they have like issues on their respective schools or any project sila one of the members of the youth leaders of the philippines um She's from Vigan. She just hmm. recently told me about her very successful pursuit sa kanyang ginagawa. Mm -hmm. I think she's not even 16. Or she's probably 16. She published her book already about depression. Oh. And, Amazing. And of this inspiration from stories from like friends and with the support of the group. And she's representing the Philippines in a lot of conventions now. She's really 
doing really good. And part of that is that she knows of the exposure of the youth leader. She's one of the most active members of that group. And, yeah, um, thanks to that group. Uh, she like, again, that, again because of that group. It's she's really an amazing student. Even we, before joining that group, what I'm trying yeah. to say is she's one of the very active uh, members of that group that also share who also shares opportunities to that group. So, Correct. Because it's, exposure to students in that such a class opportunities and she posts them there nakikita ng ibang estudyante na parang uy may ganito pala then i can be like her you know oh, not mm. really i was like may ganyan pala opportunity then i can look for that oh she published the book at a very young age then i if i am like a wanna be writer parang uy nagawa na niya so i think i can start now baka kaya ko rin diba yeah and i think oh, that group also not only provides um opportunities but also becomes some sort of like a platform for the members to share their knowledge and experience again tapping into the collective intelligence yeah. I'm telling you, it's a community. yeah it's yeah yeah uh -oh. it is a community. yeah okay all right so let's um go back to the shivening journey now okay. um at what point did you decide na you're gonna go for it? You're gonna go okay. and um, apply. And and can we talk about the application process? I'm curious to know then. Ano ano yung you know process yung patakaran? How did they do the selection? How was your experience, Magananda? I have a lot of colleagues uh, who are also evening scholars. Some of them mm. are in the side. Some of them are also in the military. So I, I I've I've known about evening for quite a while now. So last year I decided like. Mm, perhaps I, I I wanted to pursue this peace building of ocean and all so I was like so I, I, I would try chevening this year so I I decided 2018 uh, 2019 because the the process itself is one year no application process hindi siya para oh I want to join chevening I'll apply now oh okay you got in no it, it's not like that it is a mm -hmm. very hard arduous long stressful process <laughs> can imagine okay. So, uh, the the application process opens every I think it's August August opens every August so it will start with like uh, essays you know parang it you uh, sa mga nanonood na interesado you can always just like Google Chevening Scholarship how to be a Chevening Scholar you'll see a lot of tips in there pag nag open ng scholarship in August, you just have to file online. It's an online portal, you know. You send like an application form. Meron don, you just fill it up. Tapos magattach ka ng essay, magattach ka ng parang parang ka apply na trabaho. You you will attach mm -hmm. like ano yung transcript of records, reference letters, and all of the things. So you apply it. You apply online. Tapos meron don parang essay part. Parang taka five hundred words. Parang four four essay. Why do you? Why will we give you? Parang what are your plans in the next five ten years? So uh, uh -huh. what what makes you a leader? Or parang what makes you? Parang pa, bakit kasi special? Why will he give you? Why will he? Why will he give you the scholarship? Ganyan. So you have to meet all of these requirements for you to be to finally be like unconditionally pass. So magiging unconditionally pass ka ng evening. If you already you are accepted in the university and then para okay na lahat and all, um, and then you can apply for visa na pala after that, mm -hmm. then you just can say na okay I'm a evening scholar now because I'm in the UK already yeah, doing possibly. the course. Yeah, yeah. Yung interview process miss mismo that happened online then via like a video no. call or in person. In person. You, so saan ng yari yeah, sa embassy sa the world, Philippines or yes. Pero mm -hmm. mga um, people from the FCDO, from the uh, Foreign Commonwealth Development Office of the UK, pupunta yan ng Pilipinas, then they will invite you for a uh, face-to-face interview sa embassy. So I went to the embassy, um, I met the people from the United Kingdom, and some people specializing in your field. Mm -hmm. para subject matter na. experts talaga, kaya you can't really, you can't blog your way through the interview, parang ganon. Lalo na sa interview, parang ano pa, parang, if I'm not mistaken, the odds are one is to five. Which, parang sabi mo na, kung, kung, kung sampu ang kukunin nila, parang 50 kayo na nasa interview. So there's, there's, a, there's a 20% chance 
na makakuha ka na napasok ka pero 1 over 5 1 is to 5 mm-hmm. i should say so kung mm-hmm. ito yung interview sa field na yan isa sa inyo yung makukuha apat yung hindi i have a lot of friends mm-hmm. who made it to the interview part pero hindi pa rin nakakuha mm-hmm. na uh, scholarship and um, how long, when do you usually hear back kailan mo makukuha uh, yung decision after the interview ko, 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 february di ba na invite ka for interview submission mm-hmm. ng ibang mga uh, applica- applications and all tapos ang interview parang april or may april, april or may tapos na yung interview hindi right. mo pa rin alam siya so, oh. pasaka uh-uh. hindi pa yan i don't meron bang ielts yung in- ano yun Mary english as a ielts yung yung english test english ng test. uk ah okay oh ay kumusta ka nang yung chiefning kapag hindi ka naka <laughs> na reach hindi mo na reach yung requirement ng ielts na required ng university mo hindi ka rin mabibigyan ng university application. Ang galing so, naman. Yun. Kasi the fact that you're actually applying for a scholarship, everything is in English. You would think na they'd assume you already have a certain level of proficiency in the language. Hindi. Tinitest ka pa yeah. rin sa language. Di ba? Eh, kasi iba pa rin naman talaga ang IELTS. We, we all know mm-hmm. that British English is not... We are kind of like trained and so used to American English. Mm-hmm. The accent and probably the structures are the same pero yung ano yung some spellings are different Mm-mm. particularly the accent yung s you know. yung c or z tayo, may Netflix ngayon may Harry Potter medyo na sasanay ka sa pandemic in in fairness though sila yung OG talaga na English yung British English di ba pero sa atin mm-hmm. lang ang alam we, we were exposed to American English lang so, because of history ayun, pagdating ko dito sa UK hindi ko naiintindihan yung sinasabi nung nasa trend Knowing yung mismo I, I ano, feel... yung, ano, yung official na parang standard English na yun, nahirapan ka mag, ano? Oo. Oo, oo. I mean, uh-huh. wouldn't lie with that. I would say, I have a very command of the English language. I would, I am confident to say that. Mm-mm. Like, I can converse, I can write, Mm-mm. like, in English. Uh-huh. But when I arrived in here, <laughs> by pa first siguro, no? place, nga, alam mo yung, ano yung sinabi niya? <laughs> ano nga ba? <laughs> I can imagine. It takes a it takes a lot, um, a while to get used to. And ako rin, in fairness, kasi may but may mga accents pa yan. Hindi ko I'm not sure kung napansin mo. Oh, accents, I, accents, I mean, accents. I have professors. <laughs> I have like professors right now. The Welsh, the Welsh, Irish. Uh, I oh my god, Irish as well Scottish took me I don't know five years to be able to tell the difference. And only and then, because naging may naging mga colleagues ako na taga Scotland. So I ha- developed an ear for their accent. But before, parang it all sounded the same to me. Like, hindi ko talaga ma- hindi, I couldn't tell the difference between the accents din eh. <laughs> yeah. I like this so fast, my goodness. Mm-mm. Anyway, sabi mo nga, masasanay naman. Uh-oh. So going back, so balik tayo sa evening. So after noon, um, sasabihan ka nila na, okay, congratulations, unconditionally pass ka na, you're part of the cohort, and then they will meet you as a group. So lahat ng mga nakapasa, i-gather nila for a send-off at the embassy para magkakilala-kilala kayo. Kasi yung cohort, magiging mga parang kapatid mo yan. Siyempre, yes. kasi kabatch mo. Mm-hmm. Kayo ng field. So after niyan, iyan, mag-start na yung visa application, booking booking of the uh, of the tickets, evening na mag-book niyan and all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they cover Tapos, everything, di ba? All- Lahat ng, pre-departure yeah, briefing, mm-hmm. lahat sa mga nila yan lahat. Mm-hmm. Pre-departure, pre-departure briefing, yung mga basic, may mga parang mga people from UK na mga previous scholars na magkakwento ng tips sa inyo oh, para maging... Mm-hmm. So yun, tapos, if you're really like blessed, sabi nga nila, if it's written in the stars for you, then you're finally in the UK, all you have to do is like, do your best and study in the UK, mm-hmm. pero you really have to do good because you are not just studying as a student, you are representing the Philippines while studying because you are the cohort from the Philippines. Uh-huh. Even the university knows that na ikaw ay isang evening scholar, you can't hide that. Mm-hmm. So the university knows that you are representing the Philippines as a evening scholar while you're studying. Mm-hmm. So there is a certain, you know, um, element of integrity to uphold and maintain, di ba? Kasi you are holding the Philippine Absolutely. flag. Oh. oh, oh, you can't be like school bukol, as you know. Mm-hmm. So you won't miss that opportunity, di ba? Bakit di, mo sasayangin? Oh, exactly. Why, why mess it up? It's like a, di ba? It's a once in a Parang, lifetime opportunity na. It's very nice to say oh, that majority, I wouldn't say siguro 100%, pero most 
of the Filipinos sent in the United Kingdom to study master's degree all graduated with distinction, with honors. Mm. Majority of the Filipinos na pinadala rito to study from the time na mag-start ang evening, lahat yan, pag umuwi ng Pilipinas, they graduated, if not they, if they are not on the top of their class in the UK, they graduated with honors. Mm-hmm. Talagang, yeah, they really put in, they took it seriously. Yeah, they really took oh, the definitely. opportunity seriously and obviously excelled. Diba? Tsaka kasi, Ira, kapag hindi mo ito natapos at laka, na-breach mo yung contract, babayaran mo ang chivney. Ang mahal doon. <laughs> ayun, ayun. May incentive talaga Kailangan to, to finish. Ginasa sa'yo. May incentive to finish. And for a good reason. You should be, you know, diba? It's it's only uh, fair na tapusin mo yun. Oo. And o nga pala, kasi oh, yeah. do you have a, do you, you are tied to a commitment after the scholarship, diba? Yes. So, this is the only thing na mm-hmm. catch. Some people would say, anong catch? Oh, sige, you're, you'll study in the UK for two years for mm-hmm. free. Anong catch? The catch is, we have to be back kung saan bansa ka nang galing and serve for two years. Mm-hmm. Which means that, kahit nag-graduate ka dito sa UK, you can't work here after graduation. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. kailangan mong umuwi ng Pilipinas para mag-serve and to pay back sa bansa mo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that was, yeah, that's the whole premise of Shivening is to build the future leaders so that they can, you know, pay pay back sa, sa country. Imagine, na, parang UK na nga ang nagbayad ng lahat, pero they won't even ask you to serve for them. Mm-hmm. They will yung, ask you to serve your country. Yeah, your country will benefit from that. Kaya nga parang I thought this was such an interesting program. Na, is, right? isi- na strategic talaga yung, yung, yung setup niya na... Ayan, you're on track, you know, you're gonna go on this leadership track, pero apply what you learn sa home country yeah. mo, para, you know, para, they will be the ones who will benefit from that, di ba? Hindi yung, yung baliktad na actually yung we suffer from brain drain, di ba? Yung mga top talents natin sa the Philippines, most of them um, apply yeah. their, their, their skills and expertise outside of the country. Eh, kawawa naman yung Pilipinas, and whereas this one here, baliktad siya. Diba? So yeah. it's quite um it's quite um encouraging to know na may mga ganun pala and very refreshing to know na may mga ganun din pala you know Co- coming back to the wolf story eh yun yeah. parang story na we want to feed is yun may mga ganun din pala mga yung other side of the brain gen is yung mga ganito na programs na mismo mga ibang bansa tinutulungan pa yon diba mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, how was your um how was ano na ba September? So ilang months na yun? 3 4 months na ba? Five months. Five months na. How was it? Five, five months and two days. Eh, eh, Sorry, ka nag snow dito kasi the last time it snowed here. Di ba you're based in oh, London? Yeah. Di ba you're based in London? Georgia. Oh? Ano, 10 years ago. Hindi siya nagsnow every year kaya nga everyone went crazy no nag snow. So na yeah. ano ba yan? Na, na witness oh, yeah, that. I was oh. vlogging it. Mm-mm. Yan, ano yan eh bihira lang mag snow. Pero apart from the snow, which is like the novelty, di ba? <laughs> ano pa oh, what was some um, how, how was yung yung adjustment period mo here? So well, adjustment period, I wouldn't say, Ira, that I really had a hard time adjusting because I told you, I'm kind of used to being away with the family. Um, and this is not my first time studying abroad as well. So, hindi siya malaking, malaking adjustment for me. Pero syempre, nandun yung syempre, namimiss my family and all. Pero the good thing is that we are very lucky and fortunate at this time. Technology is already a part of our lives. Mm-hmm. Dati wala naman FaceTime. Imagine if if you got in into the scholarship program 20 years ago, nag-voice tape ka back home. Ano diba? Voice tape sa loob yeah. or snail mail. Pero years. now, you can do FaceTime every day. You know, you can see, I, I'm not, I may not be physically present with my family, but I can see them online every day. We do FaceTime every day. Mm-hmm. You know, you're out there. Yeah, yeah, must, uh, it helps. It helps with the distance. Pero yeah, like not so long ago, like you said, 20 years ago, telegram pa yung mga peg <laughs> And ano, you have to be very tipid sa mga words kasi may bayad yan per word, diba? Imagine, diba? Imagine paying per word now sa WhatsApp. It's like crazy. What? Diba? It's like we're seeing each other face to face right now. Mm-mm, we're not bayad to. Diba? Imagine, imagine that. Anyway. So anyway, because of that technology, mm-hmm. we're using that um, to help us, um, you know, for the adjustment. Not only that, I'm also using this opportunity whilst in the UK. Um, you know, you know this. I started a YouTube channel uh, to, and the, the YouTube channel is not just about 
me being in the UK, it's sharing my experience to our other Filipinos, uh, to, to the Filipinos sa Pilipinas, I mean, or around the world. It is not like, it is not a YouTube channel that I want to be sikat and all. You've seen it. It's it's more of just like sharing what is happening in here so that the Filipinos will have a, an idea of like, ah, yan pala ang UK. It's just all about sharing. It's just all about like, oh, and kahit giving them, uh, a glimpse of what's happening back in here. It's not even very personalized. Na, mm -hmm. na, it's, not all of, it's not about me. It's about the place, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, oh, anyway. but still, there's still an element of personalization because you're telling the st story through the eyes of someone who just came here. And yeah, it, yeah. that alone has an element of uniqueness to it. So, you know, it's a story worth sharing. Kahit nasabihin mo madami na nag-cover ng ganyan, kahit na, you still have something unique to add to the story na, like, I just want to say na, you know, don't hesitate if you, you if you feel like you have a story to share or to tell, do yeah. it, di ba? And that's exactly what you're doing with a YouTube channel. And maganda yung, ano mo, yung, yung material mo kasi madaming pwede i-cover sa London, di ba? Okay. It's such a, you know, there's so, so many that's things. that's what helped me with my adjustment as well. So, kagaya na sinabi mo kanina, what help, what, ano ba ang adaging adjustment mo? Um, I, 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 I explored London. Uh, I'm traveling alone. Alam, pwede naman eh, if you're alone, I mean like if you're walking and stuff, I do a lot of walking. And I'm very busy with my coursework sa university <laughs> kasi sabi ko nga, yo, I'm not Having taking schedule. university very lightly. I'm really studying hard, not really just hard, but smartly. I, I mm -hmm. really want to to do good in this course. Mm -hmm. So, mabilis lang yung five months. Hindi naman ako parang, oh, what to do, COVID, lockdown. So much to do in school, so much to do exploring uk so okay. much to do meeting the cohort online mm -hmm. so it wasn't really hard mm -hmm. adjustment wise so sa mga kababayan natin na nag-iisip pumunta ng uk na iniisip ang hirap ng adjustment and all i don't think it will be very hard because of the technology now it will really help you in the adjustment period you won't really feel you're always away because of this technologies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Ang boring sabihin eh, ang daming Filipinos dito sa UK that if you need moral support or Filipino support, in the first place, kaya nandiyan ang Filipino community UK. This is one, one of connect. the platforms. You know? You know? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly yeah. that. Madami tayo dito. Yeah, it's exactly oh, that. One of the one of the main one of the main. Going back to my story with Ate Badet, di ba? With, exactly. with our story with, yeah. with Ate Badet. Yeah, like, voila, she just took it upon herself to just be there. Diba? Parang, what? It's, it's you know, it's, wala, wala akong masabi. Like, it's just the true essence of the Bahinian spirit still alive sa atin, diba? Yeah. It's just really remarkable na imagine someone you've never met before, tapos, diba, will welcome you, like, you know, yeah. take you in, be in, like, be, uh, like a family member. Tapos, you know, it's just, yeah. wow, so heartwarming. Pero wait na, nung umalis ka dito sa UK, diba? That was, um, nung umalis ka pupuntang UK rather. That was quite a uh, unique timing then. Um, mm. In terms of yung, yung situation mo with your family, diba? Can you tell us? Oh about yeah, that? I just had a baby. So, I had a, <laughs> I had a, my, first... my daughter was born August 23. My first daughter. Mm -hmm. She's born August 23. Nung malapit na mga anak yung wifey ko, I got the confirmation that I got in. And I was like, Tutuloy ba ako? Sabay sila have... dumating yung due date oh. siya yung, oh my God. Did I go? Kasi I flew, I flew here exactly one month old yung baby. Mm -hmm. So you know, like we waited um, like for a few years before we had a baby. And then parang pagdating itong baby ngayon, biglang kailangan kong umalis for a year. So we had that sacrifice. So my wife and I talked about it. So, ano, tuloy ba? And all, so, parang pinag-usapan namin na, well, is you know what? We look at the long term of what you're doing. You're doing this, you know, separation sacrifice for the country and for the family anyway. Um, don't worry about it. Kung wala ng COVID, pinasunod ko na sila rito. Eh, kaso nga, because of COVID. So yeah, unique times. Um, I have a new baby. He's now six months old, which means I'm five months old in UK. And, and she's just a darling. I'm sure, I'm sure you saw her like cute photos. <laughs> yeah. I saw the one yung natulog siya. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't take a lot. And she just crashed. Oh my God, so adorable. Yeah, yeah. And then, but that's another good example of you know, short-term pain for long-term gain, di ba? 
Kasi, yeah. again, eh, na naman, the greater good na naman, big picture na naman, short-term sacrifices for long-term benefits kasi yeah. malilipas din yan eh, di ba? Yung scholarship, yeah. uh, ilang, ano lang ba yan, two years, di ba? How, how long is your scholarship? This is one year. One year oh, lang. We can finish this, eh. this November. Mabilis lang yung isang taon. Yeah. So, and yeah. Uh, kudos to Mrs. De La Cruz for being such a supportive <laughs> wife. Yeah. Imagine. She's very supportive. She's like, very supportive. It, it doesn't, it takes someone like that um to enable your partner to do greater things than let's just say Errol, huh? let's just say coming from a woman's perspective you know um yeah kudos to her because i would imagine first child you bayon see baby yeah first first born tapos siya lang well diba wala yung 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 father but then she she was just there to support and say yeah we'll do this together as a family as as a couple Parang I think yeah. there's an element of that as, as well. Na kahit na you even though you excel so much in all aspects or in many aspects of your life, I think um yung support talaga is yung parang will nag-amplify pa sa success mo hindi pa. Won't you won't you agree? You know, nga, yan, behind every successful man is a Yon. very supportive. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. So lucky, lucky. Very important. Okay, so Errol. Uh, Again, you know, alam mo kasi sa film features, I always get carried away and I need to start being better at, you know, managing the time kasi lagi siyang lumalampas ng isang oras kasi I find with your particular background and story and daming layers na talagang gusto kong himayin ah, mainly around the mindset of um being, you know, persevering and and finding your own or, or blazing your own trail for success na ikaw mismo yung sinabi mo ano, at the very beginning ikaw mismo ang may hawak ng kapalaran mo yung parang ano ba yung takbo ng ng isip ng isang tao na ganun yung ugali niya sa buhay i really wanted to get um a bit more understanding of that kaya lang syempre i'm conscious of your time then but i i already learned a lot ha, in in the <clears throat> few short minutes that we've spent together so thank you very much sa ano um for <laughs> For for your time and for your patience then. Kasi obvious naman na ikaw yung mas media train sa ating dalawa. So, <laughs> in a way, I'm learning from you then. So, thank you very much. Pero, pero I'm not gonna let you go. Kasi alam mo, um, ang, may ano dyan eh, may, may catch itong feel kong features. Pag nag-guess ka dito, mm-hmm. hindi ka papaalisin kung hindi mo ako bibigyan ng hugot na yun. So, before I let you go and enjoy the rest of your day, meron ka bang hugot na yun kung alam um, try that. Uh, I heard this from the late Senator um, Miriam <laughs> Sanchez. Oh my so, god, oh my god, I love her so much. Oh my god, she's like, she so, that's the reason the why thing. I love Hugo Lines. Imagine in Moira, this is not Hugo Lines, it's more of like an analogy story. Imagine in Moira, I want you to imagine this. Yung crush mo, crush ka din. Oh, okay, ano pa? Tapos, mahal mo, mahal ka din. Hmm. So, ano ending? Ano ending? Imagination lang din. Oh! <laughs> oh my God, sad. Pero, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's a good one, yeah. Oh my God, all the best, Errol. And um, thank good you, luck I, sa studies. I know thank you'll you. do well. Anytime you need, like, things like, I'm here, you know how to contact me. Sa mga unang mga Filipino, mga kababayan natin, you know, I'm siguro parting words. Eh, don't wait for the opportunities to come to you. Mga kabayan, look for those opportunities. And kung siguro nandun kayo sa stage ng life na sinasabi nyo na, na hanggang dito na lang, ito tanggap ko na, ganito lang ako, don't, don't stop thinking of that. Always remember, you have, you deserve it for yourself to be better. Yourself deserve a better life. Probably better than kung ano yung meron ka ngayon. And you can do it, you know. It's mm-hmm. just the matter of mindset. Mm-hmm. May sabi nga ni Ayan kanina eh. May equal footing naman yan. Siguro sabihin mo, hindi yan, fair ang sitwasyon. It's not like that. You just have to believe and have the vision that it will happen. And act on it. The two words that I always say, I and I now. Kahit ano pa lang gusto mong gawin, just think of that. Gusto mong magbabayat, I and now. Gusto mong matuto sa isang musical instrument, I and now. Yeah. Yeah. Gusto mong mag-aral ng panibagong lengguahe, I and now. Mm-hmm. Gusto mong magkaroon ng chance mag-aral abroad, I and now. Diba? Gusto mo magkaroon ng bagong trabaho, matutulan ng isang skill, I end now. Mm-hmm. It will always go down to those two words. So, mm-hmm. so salamat. I really enjoyed this talk, Ira. Thank you very much. Bye.